If Canada does not participate in reducing emissions and developing the fuel technologies and the port technologies and the infrastructure, then it's going to be bypassed. And that can lead to a significant number of consequences, which could impact our, our ability to trade because then we're going to become dependent, particularly on the uh, United States. What are the main pillars that we should be building on in order to achieve this decarbonization. The first is initiating and maintaining a collaborative set of innovations. It's unfortunate that the federal government has not established any program for the Great Lakes and the, the um, inshore fishery. We're talking about developing new fuels, which is a new technology and is going to require substantial capital equipment. And that capital is dedicated and specific. And so it means that it's not fungible. It's not saleable. It's not as if if this doesn't work, we can take it out and sell it in a secondhand market, but rather you have a piece of capital that really only had one use. And so that risk has to be shared by a number of different parties. And so if we have a large numbers of parties involved, very much like, like establishing a portfolio, we are going to be, to be made better off. It can use the much smaller Canadian component sector almost as a pilot program to see exactly what fuels are going to be more or less effective in reducing emissions at what cost. We're talking about scaling up and, and, and it's billions of dollars that, that uh, is involved here. And once we understand more, we can make the decision of whether this is going to be scaled up to be produced, for example, either in, on the East Coast or the West Coast and or the West Coast in order to service international shipping as well. And if it's not going to work, at least we haven't expended a, a considerable amount of money. An element, and I think um, for the maritime sector that is going to be helpful, is something that we call green corridors. And those are corridors that where ports make an agreement that all of activities between those two ports are going to be zero carbon or a certain standard. They're an opportunity to partner. So we can have a partnership between Vancouver and Singapore Vancouver and Shanghai or Vancouver and Hong Kong. And those partnerships where you form the green corridors are going to allow you to have traffic moving. And as long as that traffic's moving between these two corridors, you're getting the scale and the density that you need in order to have the scaling up of the alternative fuels. There's opportunities in the Canadian sector in, in the fishery, for example, there's 30,000 vessels in, in the East Coast alone. And a number of bodies, the, the lobster fishery, for example, are looking at developing electric propulsion for their vessels because of the way that their network works. And that's all a private sector initiative. Well, the federal government should be partnering with them in order to accelerate it and provide an incentive capital. The government sh should also establish funds. I have always been reluctant to say that when you tax a commodity, for example, a fuel tax, that you should earmark the revenues from those taxes to be put back into a particular mode of transportation. In this case, I would argue that revenues that are made available through the taxation of different marine fuels should be put into an R&D fund to try and develop alternative fuels that are going to be low carbon.